Hi kids. Today we're going to talk about something that I don't think you've ever heard about. It's called the friendly enemy. Wow, that's kind of a funny thing to say, a friendly enemy. Well, here's what we're talking about. Our world is very big. There are many, many people in it, but of all the people in the world, the most special ones are the children. They are like beautiful flowers growing in the sunshine. If you touch the petals of a flower, it will become droopy and look sad, very sad. Have you ever touched a flower and then after you touched it, it didn't look as pretty as it used to? Like flowers, children should never be touched in certain places and in certain ways. No one should make a child feel uncomfortable and afraid by touching them in these places. Right here, this is called your buttocks. Can you say that word? Buttocks. buttocks. Very good. Can you touch where your buttocks is? That's right. No one should touch you there. Here's another place. These are called your breasts. Can you say that? Breasts. Some people call them silly names, but that's okay. But as long as you know what they're actually called, breasts. And this is called your genitals. Boys and girls have different kinds of genitals, but they're all called the same thing. Can you touch yourself there? Where, and what is that called? Genitals. genitals. Really good. Very good. You did great. Sometimes children feel like they have done a bad thing if someone talks them into touching each other in these places. Remember, no one has the right to touch you like that or make you do things that don't seem right. Not even moms or dads or grandparents, aunts or uncles, cousins, not teachers or church people, not friends, sisters or brothers. Well, that's about everybody, isn't it? No one should ever touch you. Let me see what areas, what places should they not touch you? Here, here, and there. Very good. It is not the child's fault if this happens. Children don't do this. And you can say, do not touch me. Can you say that? Do not touch me. A little louder. Do not touch me. Excellent. If someone tries to touch you in this way, you have permission to say no. Let me hear you that. No. Yeah. Very good. Then go and tell an adult you know and trust what has happened to you and keep telling. Sometimes people don't, they don't believe it, they don't understand it, and they say, oh no, I don't think that happened. Then you go find someone else and you keep telling until someone listens to you and believes you and they say they will help you. A person who does something wrong to you is an enemy. Wow, you've heard that word before on TV, haven't you? Enemy. That's someone who does something wrong to you. Anyone who treats you nice and then touches you in places they should not touch and make you feel very uncomfortable, unhappy, and afraid can be called the friendly enemy. Can you say that? The friendly enemy. Great. This enemy acts friendly so that you will like them and trust them. They are like weeds in a flower garden. They may do nice things for you at first so that you will want to spend more time with them. They may give you nice gifts or even offer you some money. Then they will want to play bad touching games with you. They will tell you it's okay, but remember the flower, how droopy and sad it feels when someone touches them on their petals. Now, not everybody who gives you gifts are bad. Sometimes people that you love very much and who love you give you gifts, but they don't try to touch you. Remember? Okay, that's the difference. The friendly enemy can be someone you have known for a very long time. It might be someone you have visited often. It may be someone who lives near you, or even someone who lives with you. The friendly enemy will take the time to make you feel very important and special, like playing fun games with you. It may even be someone you love and who says they love you. 
But someone who loves you will not play bad touching games with you and make you feel unhappy, uncomfortable, and afraid. When someone loves you, their hugs and kisses feel good and safe because they're not touching you, remember, in places they should not touch and in ways they should not touch. When someone loves you, their hugs and kisses feel good and safe. The friendly enemy only acts friendly to hide who they really are. So they're friendly at first, but then afterwards comes the touching, and that's when you know that it's wrong. The friendly enemy can be a man or a woman, a teenager, or even another child. They can be fat or thin, short or tall, even different colors of skin, and speak different languages. But you will know that they are the friendly enemy because they act nice at first, but then they tell you that they love you and begin to trick you into doing things with them uh oh, that make you feel bad and afraid. This kind of behavior is not love. It is called abuse. Can you say that word? Abuse. abuse. Very good. And that's not love at all, is it? Love is a good thing. Abuse is a bad thing. Abuse is when someone does something bad to hurt someone else. Remember, love is when someone takes good care of you and never tries to make you do anything that makes you feel confused and afraid, such as touching you in private places. Okay? Stranger. What, honey? A stranger. A stranger, yes. A stranger might try that. And what would you tell them? What do you say to that stranger? No. Don't. No, don't touch me. Let me hear you say that. No. Don't. No, don't touch me. Very good. Very good. Now you are learning to know the difference between love and abuse. And you are learning to protect yourself from who? The friendly enemy. Hey, good job. Good job. One day the friendly enemy might invite you to visit them at home. He or she may give you something good to eat or drink. Hmm. They may make you feel welcome and hope that you will want to come back to visit often. Before you go home, they may give you a nice gift. They do this so that you will like them and trust them. They are only pretending to be friendly, but they are really bad. See them? And this boy has braces on. See that? Doesn't matter who you are, the friendly enemy will try to do something to you bad. One thing the friendly enemy likes to do is take a lot of pictures of children. They will probably show you pictures of some children with their clothes off and tell you that it's okay to do that. Well, that's very strange, isn't it? They may tell you how pretty or handsome you are and try to talk you into taking your picture with all of your clothes off. What? Would you do that? No. Oh, no way. But usually, no one has their picture taken with all their clothes off. That's not very nice, is it? And you do not have to do that. You can say, no way. Say that. No, no way. way. Good. Louder. No, no way. way. Good. Good. Go on. You guys are great. Having your picture taken can be lots of fun, as long as it is done in the right way, with your clothes on your body and a smile on your face. Can I see some smiles? All right. One day, the friendly enemy might invite you into their house and show you pictures of grown-ups touching children who are undressed. Oh, my goodness. That doesn't sound right, does it? They will tell you that this is what lots of children do with adults. They may begin to cuddle with you and tickle you. They will talk sweetly to you and try to touch you in private places. Where are those private places again? Miss show me. Here and very good, very good. They might, it might feel good at first. Sometimes it does feel good at first, but then you'll begin to feel very uncomfortable, like having a knot tied in your tummy. You will want to get away, 
but the friendly enemy has made you think that he or she loves you and that the two of you are best friends. You will wonder if you should tell anyone what happened. And should you? Should you tell? Yes, you should. What should you do? Tell. Very, very good. The friendly enemy will ask you to touch his or her private body parts. That's not right, is it? Would you do that? No, you, would not. you wouldn't want to do that, would you? But remember that if someone really loves you, they will not ask you to touch them in that way when you are a child. And see, now you're learning what is right and what is wrong, so no one can ever do this to you, can they? Because you know, don't you? Now you know that they have been nice to you just so that they could try to do these things with you. That is not love. It is abuse. What is it? Abuse. abuse. Very good. The friendly enemy will probably say that if you tell anyone what happened, to, that that person will get mad at you and say that they don't even believe you. They may even say that you are to blame for what happened. As we'll say, the, well, if you tell someone, they'll think that it's your fault. So you better not tell anybody. And is that a lie? That's a lie, isn't it? Mm -mm, you tell. Remember, it is not your fault. They are bad. Who is bad? The friendly enemy. The person that does that, the grown-up that does that is, is bad. You have the right to tell the truth about the friendly enemy. So tell, tell, tell. What do you do? Tell, tell, tell. tell. Very good. The friendly enemy may try to frighten you by saying that they will harm you or your parents or a pet that you love. But usually they are just saying that to try to keep you from telling. Just remember that you have the right to tell no matter what they say. You must keep telling until someone listens. Here are some of the people you can tell. They will be able to protect you and other children. You can talk to mom or dad or an aunt or an uncle or your neighbor or a ministry leader, your teacher, grandma or grandpa, or a policeman. Think about it for a minute. Who would you tell? A policeman. A policeman, very good. Anybody else? A policeman. Very good. Mom? All of them. Very good. You guys are learning so well. If you know someone like the friendly enemy, it is okay to get away from them any way that you can. You can kick, bite, hit, and scream. Sometimes mom and dad will tell you no fighting, but when you come, if the friendly enemy tries this, you have permission to do all of that. Kick, bite, hit, and scream. You do not have to be nice to a person like that. No one should ever abuse a child. It is all right to do what you have to do to get away from them. And see, what is this little boy doing to this person? Biting them. Whatever you have to do to get away because this is not a nice person. This is who? The friendly enemy. Good. There is something else you should never go into a public restroom alone. Always ask mom, dad, or another adult you are with to go into the restroom with you to make sure that you stay safe. If you're with mommy or daddy or any other adult and you say, I have to go to the bathroom, and they say, go ahead, you say, oh, please come with me and keep me safe because sometimes the restroom is not safe for a child to go in alone. Remember then, remind them that children need to be protected in public restrooms. That is a place where it is easy for an enemy to sneak up on a child who is alone. And if anyone touches you, remember to do what? Kick? Very good. Kick, bite, hit, and scream, and anything you have to. Do whatever you have to do to get away from them. Then run out of the restroom screaming for help. Help, help, help. Can you do that? Help, help, help. Very good. There are times when it's okay for certain people to touch your private parts. What's this? 
There are certain people that can touch your private parts. Let's see who that is. Like mom or dad helping you take a bath when you are a little child. They can teach you how to clean yourself so that you will be able to take a bath by yourself when you start school. Rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, I get clean in my tub. It's fun to splash and play. Rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, I scrub and scrub and rinse all the dirt away. Oh, there's someone else who can touch those private parts, and it's okay. The doctor, see the doctor's here, and if the doctor ever listened to your chest with this thing, it's called a stethoscope, and he can hear what's happening inside your chest. So the doctor will have to check all the parts of your body during what is called an examination. He or she will have to make sure that you are healthy or check to see what is wrong with you if you are sick. But mom and dad and a nurse should be in the room with you while the doctor examines you so that you will feel safe. That makes me feel safe. Doesn't it make you feel safer if mom and dad or either mom or dad and a nurse were in there also. So when the doctor touches you, he's doing it because he's trying to help you. My doctor cares about my health. He looks into my nose and my ears. He pokes at my tummy, looks down my throat, and he does all he can to calm all my fears. If the friendly enemy has already done these things to you, it has surely made you feel droopy, sad, and afraid, like the flower whose petals have been touched in the wrong way. Just remember that it was not your fault. Say that, it's not my fault. That's right. You were abused by a person who is the friendly enemy. Can you say that? The friendly enemy. He's the one or she, they're, they're the ones at fault. Now you must quickly go and tell someone who really loves you what the friendly enemy has done to you. You will know who really loves you because they will take good care of you and make you feel safe. They will believe what you tell them and protect you from more abuse from the friendly enemy. Their hugs and kisses feel so good. And this is, these are hugs and these are kisses. If a flower has the right kind of care from someone who is kind and loving, it will soon look and feel better. A child who is cared for by those who really love them will feel better too, like a beautiful flower in a colorful garden. And see there saying, we feel better. These are the parts that I was thinking for the book, is that I am not forgotten. Someone is praying for me, or God's got my back. Devil, be aware. Also, I, I was thinking someone around here might be looking down at me. You know what the friendly enemy is about, correct? Yes, ma'am. So what do you think if another child that you know that's maybe in your class, and how would you get them to talk to you about it so they know that they can trust you and that you can help them get help? How would you do that? If it was me and somebody was abusing me, and and I would be afraid to talk to you, but you kind of got a feeling something's going on with me, how would you approach me and to let me know it's okay to talk to you and to know that you're going to give me help? I would be like, hey, what's wrong? Is there someone that it has something happened in your family? Yes, something happened in my family, but I don't know who to talk to about. You can talk to me about it. How do I know I can trust you? That I, when I was three years old, I, I've been abused by my biological dad. Okay, thank you. I know I can trust you. And you sure that you can point me to the right places to get help? Yes. Thank you, Mary. You're a good friend. You're welcome. Sweet. Oh. Amira? Yeah. Do you think that reading The Friendly Enemy would help other children? Yes. Yes, 
much, ma'am. Wonderful. How did you feel the first time you heard me read the book to you? It felt pretty good because, because I, I know now that if something happens in someone's family, I can trust someone because they just told me about it. Does the book help you to know that you can tell other people what happened and that you can get help? Yes, ma'am. Great. Well, I am so happy, Amira, because you're going to help other children by helping me in this way, and I'm very proud of you. I'm excited, too. <laughs> you're a wonderful person, Amira, and I'm glad you're my friend. Thank you. Is there one thing that might make you special about helping other children? Is there something special about you that you know that you can share with us that got something deep inside your heart that make you want to share? When James first died, I was thinking that a new world would come into changing, like I was going to be cha changing families. And when I was first three years old, he didn't know that I was thinking this, but I was scared because I thought I was going to be put in a, in a home where they have a lot of children that being homeless, mm -hmm. me, Chloe, and Jordan. So now that I know that I ha have you and Dad, I feel like I have family. And you also have Miss Lorraine and Mr. Joe and Mary Bell and I have my teacher. I'm very proud of you, Mira. It, it takes a strong child of God to let your story come out and let your story shine so other children or other people who are going through this, you can help them. And if you're a very strong person. As I told you before, you are my hero. You're my hero too, Amira, because you're going to be helping a lot of a lot of other children, maybe even thousands and thousands of other children, because you will give them courage. And the main part that I was saying is that you don't, you don't have to keep it inside your heart. You can let whatever happened to your family out, because you don't know if someone in your school might have the same problem that happened in their family. Like, my friend Nadia's dad died. And as I know that she feels that way, so, so she knew something happened to me. So, so she ha had a chance to tell me when we got alone, because usually I tell someone something when I'm alone, not when we're together, because I don't want people barging into our um, thing. That's, that's good advice. Thank you. Thank you, Amira. I know that God is very proud of you, and he loves you very, very much. And you're going to help a lot of other children. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lorraine Fast. I'm the author of the Friendly Enemy series of Bork books for adults, adolescents, and children that is an education on the awareness and prevention of child sexual abuse and trafficking. We're all aware of the fact that trafficking has become an epidemic throughout the world. And we're here today to teach you how to best teach from the resources that we have available to you on our uh, website. It's the friendlyenemy.org and we'll go over that again a little bit later. I want to begin today with the um, adult workbook. There are actually 257 pages in this. All of our books and our resources can be downloaded from our website free of charge, including our adult workbook. What this workbook is is a really great reference book. It's information about sexual abuse that I gathered from all around the world from people who do research and people who have actually been victimized and people who have taken care of victims all kinds of people who really are the experts on the subject 
and I got their permission to basically paraphrase the information so that you can understand it so that I could understand it. And if I can, you can too. It's paraphrased in such a way that even a, a fourth grader could, could understand a lot of what's in here. It'll show you as a, um, as a person who works with children how you should work with them, how you can protect yourself from being accused of being a sexual molester or of harming children. It um, actually has the exact wording that you could, could use when you're talking to children. It tells you exactly what to do if you are suspicious that uh, a child may have been sexually molested. All of that information is in here and more, and we I conclude with the history of sexual abuse and find that sexual abuse, child sexual abuse, has been around since the beginning of time, unfortunately. One of the things that people ask a lot of me is, why do you do this? And my answer to that is available online. You can go to my website and go to the prompt that says handouts. And you will be uh, able to download all of the handouts that you see me showing to you today. I explained to you why it's free. A lot of people said to me, listen, you spent 34 years of your life trying to do this and trying to help people with it. Why do you just give it away? Why don't you sell it? I give it away because I want it to be available to you and to everyone else who needs it. And I want it to be available to even the poorest people that just don't have the money to do, to do uh, what they want to do to help others. I don't need the money from this because the only expense that I have is to take care of my website. So we do accept uh, donations. And with those donations, we do take care of our website. And we do endeavor to have the, this information translated into many languages. In the United States, there are 300,000 children ages 12 to 14 who are target for, targeted for sexual bondage. And there are victims who resist the demands of their pimps that are caged. And you'll see that on our website, a little girl, it's an actual picture of a little girl in a cage. If these children do not do what they're supposed to do, that their pimps tell them to do, and sometimes that is to have sex 30 to 40 times a day so that they could make money. It is a, trafficking is a terrible thing, and it's something that we all need to be aware of and know how to recognize and prevent. Have uh, information here on why children and adolescents are such easy targets. The average time that a teenage, uh, teenager stays, boy or girl, stays on the street after they have run away is 48 hours. And there are people out there who are just right on top of that because there is $195 billion that is, is um, estimated per year that traffickers uh, bring in for selling these children. And I do have information on the different people who have the credentials who assisted me in writing the uh, children's book, the adolescent book, and the uh, adult workbook that I'm showing to you now. These are people who have spent their lifetimes learning this, all of this stuff and guiding me along the way to be able to have it ready for you. Chapter 16 in the adult workbook is specifically on uh, trafficking involving children. And this is sex trafficking. There's a couple of different types of trafficking. One of them is labor trafficking. And we're talking here specifically about sex trafficking of children, women and men, boys and girls. A lot of people have the misconception that the, most of the victims, if not all of the victims of trafficking and sexual abuse are little girls. That's not so. It's also little boys. And it's very almost even, uh, boys and girls and men and women. In chapter 14, this is a very vital chapter in the uh, adult workbook. There is a, a friend of mine who is, has an MSW. She worked for 30 years within the uh, juvenile detention system. 
and she has uh, all of the experience of that 30 years can bring to a person to working with a lot of the kids that are in youth detention are runaways and some of the girls that were there um, that we have met personally are there because of prostitution. So these girls are being picked up, put into jail, and the primary reason why they put the girls into juvenile detention and some of the boys is because they have no place else to put them. There's, there's just nowhere, there's no place where they can be safe other than juvenile detention, and they can also get the care there that they, that they may need. This is sad. We should be able to have homes where they can go and, re and recover, and there are, but only a few. So this is called interpersonal communication skills. This tells you how to uh, talk to children, how to listen to them, and what to say and not to say when they are disclosing that they have been sexually abused. It's very, very important. Your reaction will determine whether or not they will continue to disclose and cooperate. If you go, oh no, oh my God, oh my God, they will, they'll just stay quiet. They'll, they'll be frightened and walk away. No matter what's happening inside of you or how you may feel, you have to remain calm. And in this chapter, it tells you everything you need to know about speaking to and listening to children who have been sexually abused. For those of you and many of you who are, are using this information are professionals. I'm sure you're um, familiar with the fact that you have to report all of the disclosures that you get or even your suspicions that a child may be sexually molested. And uh, this is where uh, you can go to the Office of the Child Advocate and um, see all you need to know about mandated reporting. This is extremely important. If someone knows about a child who has been sexually molested or even suspects it and you do not report it and you're a professional, you can be fined up to $1,000 and spent up to a year in prison because you become basically an accessory to a crime. So be, be very careful with this. It also has a, um, information in my, the handouts on if for this, anyone who has experienced sexual abuse, tells you what to do first, call 911 obviously, but then there are several other places and other people that can be contacted for anyone who has been sexually abused. The uh, adult workbook can be downloaded free of charge. It can be printed out as often as you want to. You use it the way that you want to use it. This version of the adult workbook can be um, purchased on Amazon or at um, Barnes and Noble and at the, my publisher, which is Yawns Publishing. And that information also is on our website. They're wonderful people and they have done all that they can to make this all happen. Uh, that's the information on the adult workbook. The next thing I want to show you is the information on the adolescent workbook. Adolescents uh, are very easy to target. One of the things that I explain to, to children who are adolescents is and the, the way that the book starts is, what is an adolescent? And I tell them, you are an adolescent. You are the one. You're not quite an adult, and you're not a child anymore. It's like when a, a, um, a snail, uh, kind of a caterpillar, like when a caterpillar roams around, and then at some point they are wrapped up in a cocoon, and then when everything is timed just right, they come come back out as a beautiful butterfly. And this is the way that I look at adolescence. Sometimes when you're uh, approaching adolescence, you're pretty awkward, and then you're going through certain changes, and when those changes are complete, you come out and you're a beautiful butterfly and you can continue on your life. That seems to really help a lot of the adolescents that I have worked with, and um, it's, a, it's a pretty good... Uh, way for them to kind of understand who they are and where they're coming from. The, the adolescent workbook is very graphic. Our teenagers today 
uh, hear a lot of things, they see a lot of things on TV, they see a lot of things on the internet. Unfortunately, the largest um, audience to pornography on the internet is adolescents. They're seeing things that they don't understand. It and gives them a great deal of difficulty in the, the natural uh, growth sexually and mentally and physically. Um, you may think that, oh, my child doesn't see any pornography. I monitor everything. Yes, they do. Very likely, most of them do because somebody's always there to invite them to see what's on the, uh, the Internet. And um, we talk about that. We talk about uh, Internet um, safety in the adolescent workbook. And uh, we talk about uh, the phases of trafficking. Yes, we talk about trafficking in the adolescent workbook. At, teenagers are very sophisticated. If you try to keep these things from them, they become vulnerable to having this happen to them. The best thing is to have it explained to them in such a way that they can understand and that does not embarrass them or frighten them. You have to be honest with them. And in the adolescent workbook, we talk about the phases, recruit, recruitment, transit, and destination that can possibly happen. And this is not just for runaways to know about. This is for all kids to know about to keep them safe. We talk about internet safety, which is extremely important. Kids get online and they get on their, their uh, cell phones and they just they talk about everything and anything. They put their pictures on there, their names, addresses, and phone numbers. And although we, we caution our kids so often, in the, in the adolescent workbook, as I said, it's, it's graphic, it's honest, and I'm telling uh, uh, adolescents in this book exactly what they need to be looking for. And the best way to do it is to read the book yourself first so that you will be able to answer any questions that they may have. And one of the things that is very dominant amongst adolescents is sexting. What they don't know is if they are caught sexting or sending inappropriate material on their cell phones, they can be arrested and they can be charged with sexual abuse because uh, sexual abuse does not necessarily even mean touching. It's talking about sex or showing pictures of sex and also in being involved in sexual uh, activity with children and adolescents, underage children, underage teens. You again can get online and download the adolescent workbook. This one is in English. We also have it online the way we do our adult workbook that in the little bit uh, nicer um, uh, book, and, uh, but you can download it free of charge. It is also in Spanish. The Adolescent Workbook is for those who speak Spanish, and this book has been brought to Costa Rica. And um, when it was in Costa Rica, several missionaries who were there at the time brought it to several other Spanish-speaking countries. So we, uh, we're very excited about the fact that we have this in Spanish. And here it is that, uh, in, a, in your uh, bound book, if you wanted to have this, again, they're not expensive, then you can get online and you can order your book online. Um, those of you who are planning on teaching a lot of this, I, I like to work with props because props um, are visual and children and adolescents really like visual stuff. This is one thing that, uh, that I really have had a lot of success with, with the kids, the adolescents, and that is be wise. They get a kick out of it and they never forget to be wise in the decisions that they make as an adolescent because the decisions that they, can, that they make can affect and will affect the rest of their lives. We have, again, the be wise. These props are not necessary, but they are very, very helpful to those of you who are wanting to teach 
and guide children and adolescents along the way on this subject. We talk also about, in the adolescent workbook, about what, what do I do if I'm taken out of my home because someone within the home has molested me, or what do I do if I'm put into foster care? And we go into great detail uh, there with uh, that I got all of the information, again, from, from experts and from people who've been there, done that, and know what they're talking about. And I have also talked to the children themselves and the adolescents who have given their advice to other adolescents, and that is in the adolescent workbook. And one of the things that we stress to them is you can choose to be sad or happy with your situation. You have a choice to get through what you've been through, either successfully or unsuccessfully. And at that age of uh, being a teenager, this is so very, very important. In conclusion to the adolescent workbook, it's important that they know who they are it's how you see yourself that's very, very important to your growth. If you see yourself as a victim, you will always be a victim. But if you see yourself as an overcomer, if you see yourself as someone who has had an experience that you have overcome, then you are going to be, you'll be the lion instead of the tiny little kitten. It's important to know who you are Now, the uh, children's workbook is suitable not only for children, but I have actually had uh, my toughest assignment was to have a class f classroom full of uh, fifth grade boys. And um, I thought, wow, this is going to be tough because um, it's, it's embarrassing for fifth grade boys to talk about the sexual abuse. So I went into the room with the boys and I looked at them and they kind of sat there and they were just, they had their little puppets, which I'll show you in a little while. We have, uh, we have puppets that we use that the kids actually make themselves. And they looked very, very uninterested. They looked like they wanted to get up and run away. And I looked at them and I said, look, I know that this is embarrassing. I know you're embarrassed. And so am I. It's embarrassing for me, too, to have to talk to you about this. But the truth is, this is designed for you. And I was using the children's workbook. I said, this book is designed for you to, um, to learn about and protect yourself from sexual abuse. Because boys and girls your age fall victim to this. And I said, um, also, if... It never happens to you. You need to know about this. You must. Some of you have younger sisters and brothers or cousins or friends that need to be protected from this, and they need to know about it too. So let's just get through this together. And they were just drawn in. I was, I was very, very excited about the fact that they were raising their hands and they were asking questions and answering questions. So those of you who that I'm speaking to, the training, this is a training the trainer program. I'm teaching you how to train children and how to teach them this, this on this subject. Uh, it was very important to let them know that I knew how they felt and I gave them that opportunity. Uh, the children's workbook comes in this version. This is the original. I wrote this book 34 years ago. I felt called to do this at first, I really didn't want to do it because 34 years ago, we didn't even talk about sex, let alone sexual abuse. But as I told you from uh, the chapters in the uh, adult workbook, sexual abuse has been around since the beginning of time. So this is the one that I originally wrote. And when I wrote it, it came very, very easy because I, I spent an entire year, my husband Joel and I spent an entire year researching all of this during which time we, we interviewed a lot of people, the parents of abused children, children who were abused, adults who were abused as children, and just every aspect of it. 
And it seemed like um, no matter where I, we turned, there was someone who had something to add to the wisdom and the knowledge that has gone into this project. And the woman that originally uh, did the illustrations, Janet Curtis was her name, and she did the original uh, illustrations. But she told me later that she wanted to redo the illustrations and do them a little bit better. And unfortunately, Janet passed away before she could do that. So I began to really pray, and I wanted the workbook to have nicer illustrations, more professional illustrations. And lo and behold, I met up with a woman. Her name is Kimberly Anderson. And I went to her synagogue, and, um, as, and she was... Um, present in one of the classes that I gave and she came up to me later and she said would you be insulted if I asked you if I could uh, fix up the illustrations in your children's workbook and I said not only would I not be insulted but I have prayed for this to happen for many many years and Kimberly is a professional artist as a matter of fact her information is on our website so that you can reach her if you had any artistic work that needs to be done she's absolutely amazing and she has done a beautiful job of re-illustrating the friendly enemy children's workbook we're very very proud of this we're very proud of kimberly she is a wonderful person and she's a mom and, and a wife and and like i said she's a professional artist and uh You'll be able to, this is available to you as well, on our website, can be downloaded again, free of charge, the entire book, and uh, can be printed out and used for all of your projects. One of the things that we do, as I said before, is we have, uh, we make little puppets out of uh, sandwich bags. And uh, Kimberly has illustrated how to make the puppets out of the little sandwich bags. She has created a, um, a pattern for the little faces and the little leaves. And these, the children make the puppets themselves and then use them while they're being read the book, The Friendly Enemy. This is a children's project. But again, the adolescents really enjoy it as well. The children's workbook is also in Spanish, has gone to several Spanish-speaking countries. It is also written in Tagalog, which is the language of the Philippines. My daughter-in-law, Maribel, did this. I'm very, very proud of her, and I'm very proud of this book. And it is also written in Creole, which is the language of Haiti. I have to tell you a very quick story. When it went to... Um, to Haiti, it was the year um, that there was a terrible earthquake there. And I thought, oh no, we just brought all of those books down there. And also, along with the books, the missionary, Linda Dean, that brought them down there, brought baby dolls and soccer balls for the children because they had no toys. And the wonderful thing that happened was I thought, oh, all of that is gone. And then I was watching TV one day, and there they had pictures of Haiti, and these books and the soccer balls and baby dolls were brought to an orphanage in Haiti. And as I was watching TV, the commentator, the reporter, was in a car, and he said, oh, look, there's an orphanage over there, and it looks like the kids are playing soccer. And I thought, you know, thank God if those soccer balls survived, so did the baby dolls, and so did the friendly enemy. And I'm very excited about that because it's still there, still doing its job, and still working. Those of you who want to create your own book, this book was done by my, uh, uh, by my um, publisher, Jan's Publishing. It can be done also in, with the new illustrations. It is uh, $150 for this large book, and it's, it's virtually indestructible. But if you cannot afford that and you want to make your own, it's very, very simple. Just get some poster board, 
and print out the pages. You can either do it in the original, with the original uh, pages. Some of the, some of the people that I've talked to that teach this like the original pages, the original um, pictures or illustrations best because they can give it to the younger kids and they can scribble all over them and they have a great deal of fun with that. So I have left that online. But you can also do it, as I said, with the, um, the new illustrations and just print them out one page at a time and glue them onto a post poster board and have them laminated. Uh, since there is a store called Schoolbox. Look it up online and see if there's a, a school box store in your area. And the, uh, la the laminating is very inexpensive. Um, otherwise, you can go to any place where you can have laminating done. And you have your own book that you can use to teach the children year after year after year. And this is one way that I thought was very clever that uh, a camp, a, a kid's camp, uh, printed out the workbooks. It saved uh, on uh, printing, and it saved on the cost of the paper. Again, uh, as I said, I, I like to use um, props because it helps the children. This is one I use when, when explaining to the children what places you should not touch. The experts say that it's not enough just to tell the children that you're not supposed to let anyone touch you in private parts. They don't know what parts are private because they're children, they're young. And it's best to show them and to illustrate to them what parts of the body you're talking about, primarily the breasts, the genital areas, and the buttocks. And I actually have the children touch themselves and say, this is my breasts, these are my genitals, and this is my buttocks. And they are very, very good about that. They've learned a new word. And the fact is that if any time a child has to go to court, if they do not know the actual word for the part of their body that was touched, the court will not accept it. You can't call these my twins, or this my Mary Jane, or this my Heine. I mean, that, that's we all have pet names for these places. I understand that. But we need to tell our children what the names of these places actually are. Children will actually go into uh, a room with their attorneys and their parents can be watching and they will have what's called a forensic interview. And this, this is uh, professionals who are talking to the children and very carefully and very slowly listening to what the child is telling them about the experience that they have had. And if your child can say, they touched my breasts, they touched my genitals, and touched my buttocks, or whatever else that they have to say, um, this was, is very, very helpful in court. So teach them this. It's important. The last thing I want to show you about the children's workbook is what we call our tiny book. This little book can be used um, by people who own businesses or, lar or work in large corporations. And this book is an overview of the children's workbook. And as I have said to you, I have used the children's workbook uh, even with teenage groups. And they really responded to it. And what, it's, what it does, you can have your logo placed right here and put these little books out and parents can look at them and get all of the information that they need to have about the friendly enemy. And it's showing the public that here we are, we care about your children. The best way to get this done professionally is to call our publishers, Jan's Publishing, and have them make these little books out for you. And they can give you all of the information that you need. I want to thank you all so very much. And I want to encourage you to take this information and you go and you become the one who saves the lives of many, many children because you're letting them know what they need to know about sexual abuse, letting them know what they need to know about the friendly enemy. We agree that stranger danger is very important, and we, we ask you that, to really pay attention to that. But most of the time, the danger is not the stranger. 
It's the one that they know and love and trust, the friendly enemy. Thank you.